Now I'm sure you've heard the terms force touch or 3D touch floating around the internet lately, but aside from their apparent affiliation with the most controversially loved or hated fruit in the tech world, what do these terms really mean? Is 3D touch just a cool hologram that projects from your phone? Is force touch a way to channel your inner Jedi when you're using your phone? Sadly, no. These terms refer to capacitive touchscreens that are capable of reading how hard you press on them. And while that might not sound like a big deal, it could change a lot about the way we interact with our touchscreen devices in the future. So how do they work then? Well, there are so many different manufacturers starting to patent their own designs that there isn't really a industry standard method yet, but in the case of Apple devices, there is a grid of special capacitive sensors and strain gauges placed behind the screen's backlight that measure microscopic changes in distance between the cover glass and the backlight itself. So when you press harder on the screen, the distance between the glass and backlight is shorter, resulting in force input. 3D Touch is even capable of reading multiple levels of pressure, allowing for more interface options like the ones that we see in the iPhone 6S. Force Touch, however, is only capable of detecting a single level of pressure and is better suited for devices like the Apple Watch, which can benefit from additional interface options, but might not have the room for the extra hardware and screen thickness necessary for 3D Touch. So the concept itself then seems pretty straightforward. You press on the screen and the device recognizes where and how hard, but what puts this feature into practice is the software designed around it. Most of the current uses for 3D Touch revolve around shortcuts and convenience. For example, you could press on the Twitter app harder to be able to immediately start typing up your tweet without having to navigate through the app itself, or you could press on a preview of a picture or attachment and it would show it to you without fully opening it or leaving your current application. This is essentially like having right click and middle click and more different ways of clicking, even on devices that would normally have such small screens that they wouldn't have enough navigation buttons to be able to put in all of that functionality. Now at the moment, this technology is not available on that many devices, but what does the future hold for those of us who aren't a fan of the fruit? Will pressure sensitive screens become the new standard in the near future? At this point, it's impossible to be 100% sure. This new tech has opened many possibilities for the way we interact with our devices, but one could argue that these changes add another level of complexity and more room for accidental input, especially in bumpy situations where you might not have the best precision behind your press. That being said though, 3D and Force Touch are opening many doors for third-party app developers to expand existing apps or develop new ones. And for our Android brothers, Synaptics promises to bring what they call Clear Force, their own take on pressure sensitive screens to several unnamed Android flagship phones in early 2016. It's unclear at this time what Clear Force will enable in terms of functionality, but I'm hoping for new ways of interacting with mobile games and ways to type in all caps when you're super mad. Which I guess brings us to the part of the video where normally I would close with a cheesy pun, but for this one I realized that I just have to push too hard to find a good one. Speaking of pushing, I'm going to push you guys to head over to ifixit.com, the world's free online repair manual. They've got step-by-step -step repair and teardown guides for like literally thousands of different devices. We're talking iPhones, iPads, Mac computers, Android devices. It's all wiki based, so it's always up to date and it's totally free. No ads, no login walls, no nothing. So then how does iFixit make money? Great question. Well, with their line of professional repair and upgrade tools, they've got a huge selection of parts for Macs, iDevices, Android smartphones, tablets, basically anything that you can find instructions for how to take apart, and they've got a lifetime warranty on all of their parts. Personally, huge fan of the ProTech Toolkit that I first unboxed like almost three years ago and have been using since then for all of my repair needs. It's got all the hard to find screwdriver bits, but they've got all kinds of other great stuff like their eye opener heating pad, their suction cups for pulling off screens, their, uh, their professional bag that's got like all that stuff with like magnetic pad for putting all the screws and labeling everywhere they go. It's all great stuff. So head over to ifixit.com for all your electronics repair needs. 
Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, hit like. If you disliked it, well, hit dislike, I guess. If you want to check out our other channels, we did a really cool video over on Linus Tech Tips recently, where I found an 8-core Intel CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, as well as a motherboard for under 150 bucks, so you can learn how to build one for yourself over there. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possibles, and as always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, and all that good stuff.